So Tuesday morning, and I come across a car that I saw advertised local to me, just 14 miles down the road, um, near to me in the Hampton. So I'm going to go drive down there, have a look at it now, and if it's any good, I'll buy it and I'll, we'll do the walk around. Right, so I'm just driving back from viewing this car in Rushton. It took me about 20 minutes to get here. And oh my God, when I viewed the car, the guy was getting so many calls. It was literally one call after the other, after the other. Um, so, but sad thing is, I've decided against buying the car. Um, it was a Nissan Note 1.6 petrol, 59 plays, so 2009, 55 miles um, on the clock almost full service history there's a couple of years missing um but when we it was an um elderly chap's car who sadly passed away um so it um, is it the guy's friend family friend who's selling it on their behalf um but it there was about eight or nine items on the mat um it just it had a recent mat um eight or nine items that are still advisories there was like tires wheel bearing there's a leak from the exhaust um, and some subframe bushes as well um, so that would have cost quite a bit to do plus the um, the bodywork was pretty um, pretty it, it had been repaired um, the guy to be fair he was he was honest with me he said the the chap who was who was driving it um, he actually put the car in a ditch um, so on the listing because it's interesting because when I saw the car um, the listing there was no pictures of the front of the car So um, I rang the guy before I come. I said how come there's no pictures of the front of the car Is there like any damage to the front of the car? So suddenly you always have to um, look out for and I've learned over the years So many mistakes I've made of going viewing cars on angles which are not shown in the listing I'm not thinking anything about it and then realizing when I get there that um, there's damage to that side of the body that there's not um, pictured in the listing so he, he did yeah he was honest with me to be fair to him he said yeah the, it was um, the guy put it in a ditch but it's been repaired but the level of yeah it wasn't very done to a very good level um, standard you can still see the damage on the front bumper so that to be fair needed to be done again um, there was a dent or on one of the doors and the rear quarter on the driver's side had a uh, previous repair the boot oh let me go this way uh, the boot lid had a previous repair as well and you can see it wasn't done to a very good standard so there's a lot of body work to be done to the car as well not just mechanically so I, just, I made him an offer he's had so many calls on the car so I knew he would, be, he would sell it sooner or later um, and I, I just made, he, he told me a price, I made him an offer, no hard feelings, we couldn't agree on a price, because to be fair, like, I had to, there's quite a lot, for me, if I was going to retail it, um, which, I, which was the plan, um, it would um, cost me quite a lot in terms of the bodywork, bodywork is so expensive to get done, plus all the mechanics to get, to get an advisory free MOT, would have been spending quite a lot of money on the car, and then it wouldn't left me with much margin for profit, so, um, I've left it, oh, yeah, I walked away from that one. I've got quite a few cars anyway that I need to get on with. Um, I probably I probably shouldn't be looking at buying cars when I've got so many cars that I need to prep and stuff. But <laughs> that's the side of the business that I really enjoy. I really enjoy going out viewing cars and looking at looking for cars and car searching and buying, and that's the bit I really enjoy. But um, yeah, so onwards and upwards. You don't buy every car that you view when you go to auction. Well, I don't go to auction. When people go to auctions, you never always buy the cars that you bid on and stuff. Sometimes you have to walk away. Um, I stuck to my gut feeling. I made him an offer um, and I didn't I didn't increase my offer. Um, he he gave me a counter offer, but still for me it was a bit too high. So um, I walked away from it. And then that's what I've learned over the years. Sometimes you just have to walk away from deals that you don't think is right for you so yeah let's crack on i've got loads of cars to get um prepped my mechanic should be coming down today to do the mat repairs for the yes max and then i've got other cars that i need to relist on auto trader i need to clean so we'll crack on and i'll see you on the other side of this video 
So I've just come back from the MAT station. I'm in the S-Max and we've got the MAT work and the failure's done. So we've got a nice clean bill of health for the S-Max. Advisory free, 12 months, advisory free MAT. So this one's good to clean now. It needs a good old clean. It's got the seats down at the moment. So I'm going to validate this myself, I think. Get it all um, ready to go whilst I wait for my mechanic to give me the part number for this door lock. There's quite a few different variations. So I, I want to make sure I get the right part. So as soon as he gives me the part number, I'll get or I'll order that probably from eBay. And whilst that's coming, I'll get this one validated and, and then he can swap over the door lock. But um, yeah, we are slowly progressing through all the cars and getting them ready for retail it's a, a lot of cleaning i'm going to be doing over the next couple of days but thankfully the weather's a lot nicer now so i've just brought the marker down to my mt station it's wednesday night i could have recorded this during the day but i wanted to see how this footage comes out on my new camera so i just brought it down ready for them to do the test uh, mt test in the morning um i think there's a there's a definitely like a clucking or clunk sound i should say from the front right hand side um so i think that's an anti-roll bar because that it come up as an advisory on the last mt and also when i'm braking there's a noise coming from the rear so i don't know if it's just the disc or the pads or it could potentially be the caliper so i'm going to post the, the keys through the letterbox from mat station and we'll pick it up tomorrow morning and see if we've passed I don't think this is going to pass high high a chance of this is going to fail and then we'll see what they pick up on and what is failed on so i've got the indicator stalk here for the fiat panda um which didn't fix my issue with the fiat panda and the headlights being on all the time so i did message i got this from ebay i did uh message the seller to say can i return it because it hasn't fixed my issue but they never got back to me so i've just relisted it on ebay as an auction rather than buy it now and it will just sell for whatever it gets on the auction and in the previous video you would have seen i had the ix35 where the reverse camera wasn't working here's the old one that we took off I don't know if you can see the camera will focus there's a crack i'm not sure you can see there's a crack in the lens just there which must have caused i think you can see it there which must have caused the uh, come and fail so I can check I can check that in the bin and then I also I've ordered in here is a parcel shelf for the Fiat Panda as well I'm dropping that the Fiat Panda off to the body shop today so we'll see how that comes out and um I've got news about the mocker that I sent to 47 MOT yesterday so we'll go and pick that up and see what the results are from the MOT so I've just picked up the mocker from the MAT station and unfortunately we've got a big fail. So let's just go through what it's failed on. Uh, the ink's not great on their printer. So let's hopefully you can see what's going on here and what the failures are. So we've got wind, windscreen wipers not working, headlamp projection, so that's a bulb. Uh, you've got suspension armboard joint and two of those. You've got some track rod ends. You've got some broken coil springs on our advisories. You've got coolants low. I know it's due a service. Um, brake fluids low, and then another suspension arm um, pin or bush. So you can just see, which is a part of, which is really the, a point of this whole video. Just I wanted you guys to see that when we when car some people think that car dealers just literally just buy a car from the public or from auction chuck a bucket of water over it and then put it up for like 50 100 pounds more than what they bought it for and then they're making big margins and a big profit but to do things properly you can see how much running around and how much effort it takes to get the cars prepped correctly and how much it costs because that those parts there on their own are going to be i don't know off the top of my head about 300 pounds three four hundred pounds plus the labor the window wipers were working previously and now not at all so it could be just a fuse but even when they were working um i mentioned this in the previous video they would wipe down and then wipe back up when you start the car and then it was stopping like the service position so i think that could be motor related so there might be the motor that we need to change um, what else on this car i'm surprised that on this car nothing come up regarding the brakes so when i'm braking there's a noise like 
coming from the back of the car so it could be the calipers so i'll need to get my mechanic to check that and literally as well as pulling it into this car place where i keep my cars you, when you turn the steering wheel it started making that noise so i don't know if that's related to the track road ends or not but i'll have to get my mechanic to check that so that's just three four hundred pounds just on the parts plus the labor plus the service plus potentially brake pads as well or discs or calipers and then also on this car which i've mentioned in the previous video we've got a door dent on this front driver side door let me see if i can get an angle you can see it oh it's really hard to pick up on the camera there's a dent there I don't know if you, oh you can see it there look there that's it yeah you can see it there where someone i don't know if so like a ball's hit there hit it or someone's leaning to it somehow i'm not sure what's going on there you can't really see it from this angle or you can kind of see it around there the more on this angle you can see it crazy thing is when i took this down to the body shop that i use the price that they quoted me to get that done it was cheaper for me to buy well slightly cheaper for me to buy second hand door within the same colour and getting the mechanic to um, swap the doors over because I guess the, the price of everything's gone up the price of materials the price of paint all that stuff's gone up so they have to repair that plus it's got a scratch along here so they have to paint that as well so I've gone and bought a second hand door so I'll have to get my mechanic to change that door as well so that's labour on that plus the door was almost I think it was about 280 I think so on all, on, all in total on this car is going to be maybe seven eight hundred pounds maybe more to get this prepped ready where well, i'm confident that i can sell this car and it's going to be good for the customer so at the end of the day every car i don't think people some people don't appreciate that every car that a dealer sells they need to be confident that there is no known issues on the car for, first of all and that if there are any issues that they're going to be they've got enough margin in the car to cover those issues because obviously you're going to have warranty claims and stuff like that plus you you don't want bad customer feedback and all that kind of stuff you don't want customers coming back to you with issues with cars when you're moving on to other cars to prep and stuff like that and you're working on other cars and that's going to put you back picking up cars that you've sold previously and all that kind of stuff so yeah just a quick little video and a quick roundup of what i think a uh, big misconception on car traders is that we just buy cars get them washed go to the car wash place pay 15 20 pounds for a car wash in and out and then sell it on and don't get me wrong there are people that do that but then and you i do get you do sometimes get those kind of cars where you when you don't have to do much on the cars maybe just a service or some brakes or um, some tires but they're few and far between usually there is quite a lot of work that needs to be done before you're happy and confident to retail it so yeah just uh, uh, update on that on this car so I'm gonna get all those parts ordered and get my get the car booked in with my mechanics so they can get that done and then in other news I am going over now to my the new body shop person that I'm gonna use to drop off the Fiat Panda so this is where the the cat s fiat panda where we're getting the front bumper painted and the bodywork on this one is just a bit all over the place you can see how faded it is hopefully this camera's picking it up um so yeah we're gonna get it back it's gonna be interesting to see what color it comes back in in terms of what type of red we go for because this wing which i've mentioned in a different video the previous video i think is a slightly different red to this one so i'm hoping he'll go for the under underlying red on this one with that with the bumper and maybe we blend this in but i'm going to speak to him now um yeah and then we'll come back and revisit this car it might not be in the next video it might be in a video after so if you want to see how we get on with this car and the mocker that's over there make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell if you got to the end of the video thanks for watching make sure you hit a like on the like button there's about 80 percent of you that are watching the videos are not subscribed so please subscribe to the channel i'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of this month and then once i hit a thousand subscribers we'll do some kind of giveaway um so yeah thanks for watching take care and i see you in the next one